she felt she could love away all the problems. No, you can't love away a DeBarge problem, baby. You can't. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you mother to, to Teresa, Michelle Obama, uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Who else is a magnificent uh, woman in the world? I don't know. I don't know. Julie Andrews. Bugs, hello there, bells. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Today's looky looky would be our Camila Flowers. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's talk about this Janet documentary, part one. Now, as I'm watching the Janet Jackson documentary, baby, it's taking me back in time. And the main reason as to why my channel is what it is, is because nostalgia is everything to me. Nostalgia makes you smile. It makes you happy. And it's able to take you back to a place where you were most happiest. Your childhood. Okay? Even though, you know, I know all of our childhoods weren't perfect, but we did have some happy times. And watching the Jackson family grow with us was a part of our happiest times. Also, what I've decided to do was not to uh, utilize this video as a way to regurgitate what happened in uh, the Janet Jackson doc, okay? What I'm gonna do is talk about the most profound moments and um, the rumors that were dispelled in this documentary. Okay. The show opens up back in Gary, Indiana in the home that they grew up in. Now, Janet Jackson was way too young to remember uh, those times in that home. Luckily, she was there with Randy and Randy broke down everything to her. Hey, you, Latoya and Reby, you guys were over here. All the boys slept in this room. Janet goes on to break down the easiest way to remember the family breakdown, okay? She said it goes a girl, Three boys, that would be Reby, Jackie, Tito, Jermaine. A girl, three boys, Latoya, Marlon, Michael, and Randy, and then another girl, Janet Jackson. I never knew that Janet was the youngest. I never knew that. I thought that it was a boy that was the youngest. In fact, I thought that Randy was the youngest. So another thing that we learned in this documentary was that Jackson Street, was not named Jackson Street because of the Jacksons. It was always named Jackson Street. Something else that she spoke on that I thought was profound. You know, unfortunately, Joe Jackson, Papa Joe, he, has, he had a very negative image. You know, they kind of labeled him as a mentally and physically abusive man. Okay, now Janet says that discipline is important when you're rearing children. I but how Janet Jackson said that discipline without love is tyranny, okay? And she says that that is not what she experienced with her father. And because I feel like Janet Jackson was 
one of the three girls, I believe that the discipline that the girls endured was not the same discipline that the boys endured because you have to be harder on the boys, especially coming from a father. Mothers, women, you know, we're really soft on boys. You know, that's part of the reason why it's bitch-ass niggas flying all over this earth Fine. right now. Okay, he love you, girl. Just remember that. Okay, I know this is the third time he done stole your puss, girl, but don't send them home to me because I can't take you keep them. Now, let me tell you something else, and this is a question to my viewers. Do you believe that she would have made this documentary if Papa Joe was still alive? I say no. Answer no, because I believe up until this day, her father still has a certain kind of hold on her and it's, it's inexplicable. Now, something else that I found out during the documentary was the correlation between her and James DeBarge. Okay, some of y'all be so mad at me because you know I did the James DeBarge or the DeBarge Unsung. And y'all was like, she's so ignorant, she don't even know how to say that last name. It's DeBarge, not DeBargey. Y'all niggas really think that I don't know uh, the DeBarge last name, really? Y'all don't know how to, you know, loosen the F up. Y'all don't know how to do that. I give everybody nicknames. That's what we do over here. The correlation between Janet Jackson and James DeBarge knocked me out. Okay, I forgot completely about the fact that uh, James DeBarge's older brother, Tommy, was, or was it Bobby DeBarge? It was Bobby DeBarge, was madly in love with LaToya. So, because LaToya and uh, Bobby DeBarge already had a relationship, Janet Jackson already knew the DeBarge family. Okay, I didn't know that. I thought they was just out somewhere, you know, going to some party, write on magazine, snapped them together, and before you know it, they're a couple. That's what I thought. But no, in the documentary, she said she knew him since she was a child. Them two used to talk on the phone all the time together. I was like, damn. Yeah, Janet, girl. I don't know why you were okay with talking about your relationship with uh, James DeBargey. I mean, divulge for all you sensitive mother hunchies, right? I don't know why. You know, it, it, it makes you feel a certain way because Bobby Brown is dark-skinned. And he had mentioned in his book about the fact that, um, you know, he felt like he was too black or too dark-skinned to fit into the, you know, Jackson family dynamic, okay? Because... Joe, according to Bobby the Brown, wanted her to deal with somebody that was non-black. Hence, Renee Alejandro. We're going to go on and talk about that later. But what she did say, without talking about Bobby Brown, was that she found herself, at the time, um, attracted to drug abusers. You know, she's just like many of us women, which makes her human, which I loved about this documentary. It made her appear very, very human. Now, again, Janet, I don't appreciate you leaving out Bobby the Brown, okay? I don't appreciate that shit. But by her mentioning her having um, an attraction to men who uh, use drugs and have that bad behavior, I think that was kind of like a silent shot in the dark to Bobby the Brown. I ain't going to mention you, nigga, but I will mention that, okay, I like drug abusers, okay? Or drug use. Janet Jackson, like many of us women, think that we can love away the problems that some of these men have. Uh-uh, girl. She uh -uh. felt she could love away all the problems. No, you can't love away a DeBarge problem, baby. You can't. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you mother to, to Teresa, Michelle Obama, uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Who else is a magnificent uh, woman in the world? I don't know. I don't know. Julie Andrews. You can't love away some of these men's problems, okay? Because their brain be broke, baby, okay? And it don't take love. Sometimes it takes medication. She goes on to talk about how disappointed she was at the fact that she felt that James took advantage of her naivete. 
Okay, we've been there, you know. Um, once we get out of the situation with whatever person is taking advantage of us, male or female, when we look back, sometimes we get angry because we feel like, wait a minute, I loved him with a poor heart, okay? He knew that I loved him with a poor heart. And instead of him absorbing it and appreciating it, he took advantage of it. Okay, so that was very eye-opening for and us. And we move okay? on into the baby conversation. She says there's no baby. For the first time, I believe that there is no baby. I'm very happy that she approached it in this documentary, okay? She even broke down how uh, the daughter of one of her older brothers, they thought was Janet's baby because they look so much alike. Right. Continuing on, she talked about... When she was on Fame, that was around the same time that the baby rumors were swirling around that uh, she had started picking up weight. So people were looking at her like, Janet, girl, you pregnant with the James DeBargy baby? Debbie Allen, she provided commentary and said, there was no baby. Where was the baby? How could she do a baby? She right here. She on fame with us all the time. Despite the fact that she's working on fame, she is a little chubby, and that's another thing which makes her superhuman. Watching this documentary, Jenny Jackson's been dealing with, um, you know, weight issues her whole life, okay? And, girl, well, I seen how you did not touch on the rib thing because remember Janet Jackson wanted to have a small waist but the way her body was built it couldn't work like that you know she ain't touch on the fact that oh I did have a rib removed remember when they said that about her she also spoke about at that time she was on birth control y'all oh my god let me tell you about birth control if you young okay back then I don't even know do they still have birth control pills do women still take that shit I call it that shit because it is what it is, okay? One birth control pill, you hear me? One birth control pill was like a stack of pancakes. You heard me? So she on birth control. She gaining the weight, but ain't no baby. Again, Debbie Allen is like, how's she having a baby when she taping fame? She ain't pushing no baby out on fame, so that's you you crazy. Ask your mama about them daggone pills, girl. And let me tell you, and that shit never worked. And then it's funny because I got on birth control pills at 16. I wasn't really fucking. But I was still on them birth control pills because I wanted to be on them just in case one day I did decide to, you know, take the dive into the depths of heaven with some dude. Okay. All right. But I kept gaining so much weight that I was like, man, F them pills. Then she goes on and she admits that the Thriller album was when everything started changing between her and her brother. Because she said the three, her, Randy, and Michael, were very close. They were the youngest, okay? But when Thriller came, things started changing. She felt a shift happening in her relationship with her brother. So anyway, before we go further, let's talk about her father as her manager, okay? So many things, man, that I just did not know, man. Remember that uh, around this time where uh, Janet is coming of age in the industry, the Jackson Five, or the Jacksons, because you know, Motown stole the Jackson Five from the Jacksons, right? But, um, the Jacksons had fired their father as their manager. I, I agree because I don't feel like sitting down in front of you saying, okay, I want to talk to my dad today. Okay, I need to talk to my manager today. No, I need you to be my parent 100% of the time, period. Yes, okay. it's a way of keeping all the money in the family, but no. No, 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 no. You as my parent is priceless. My manager, I can buy some white man named Schlesenauer to take care of me and make all the right decisions for me. You as my father is, 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 is what I need more than I need Schlesenauer to take care of my business affairs, okay? Because just in case Schlesenauer fuck up, I need to be able to go to my dad and say, Dad, what you think? You know what I'm saying? But when you got one person being two things to you, it's dangerous, you know, and the lines get blurred. The Jacksons had fired the father, right? So now Joe Jackson has said, I'm getting ready to make Janet Jackson an even bigger star than Michael, okay? Did not know. Her father set up 
the audition for Good Times. Didn't know it. Her father was the one that told her that you're going to be on Fame. Okay? Did not know that. I thought that was something that Janet just wanted to do. Janet Jackson, and I remember this episode, clear as day, Janet Jackson was on American Bandstand, okay? Dickity Clarkity said, what's next? She said, oh, I want to go to school, you know? You're going to put your career on the back burner? No, I'm going to have to learn to do them both, child. That sounds like my mama. Nay, nay, what you going to do? You going to work or you going to go to college? Oh, I, I work. Should you give me the option to work? Okay, let's go do that. My mama was like, good, now you can do both. Figure it out. Fuck, you threw me in a trick bag, mama. When Janet Jackson said that she actually wanted to go to school to be a lawyer, but her father said no. I mean, I was like, Joe, come on, Joe. Come on, Papa Joe. I think Joe kind of made it a competition between the Jacksons and Janet Jackson. Because I'll show you, Jacksons. Yeah, you're my sons, but you fired me. So now I'm about to make Janet what you could be, okay? So now Janet Jackson is being used as a pawn in Joe Jackson's game, okay, against his boys. Now Janet Jackson meets Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, okay? You know that's the beginning of the beginning, y'all. Y'all know that's the beginning of the beginning. Beginning, because you know she had young love. Ring around the roses, young love, searching for a hot soul true. She had them old goody goody songs, okay? She was still sweet and innocent. But when Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis took her in the back and was talking to her, they was like, wait a minute, Jenny Jackson kind of spunky. She ain't, you know, sweet and innocent like that young love girl. We got to make us an album. Control. Never gonna stop. Control. This is around the time that Bobby the Brown is hunching her, okay? And, you know, she still got Alejandro in the corner, right? You know, I mean, God bless you, Alejandro, but sometimes women need that thug passion. We'll take, you know, you, you good enough to go out in public with us. We'll take you to the, to the, to the Red Lobster with us. Okay, we can go to, you know, the gas station together. You know, but Bobby the Brown, uh-uh. We keep you in the house. Oh, y'all, my bad. Hold on, y'all. If all the new people, y'all don't know this, my bad. Oh, one time I was dating this girl. Oh, she was not good enough. She was an engineer, right? She was, um, you know, she was, you know, she, she was okay, but she wasn't good enough, okay? She smoked too much weed, you know? She didn't take care of her locks the way I needed her to. It was like, I couldn't take her out in public, y'all. I couldn't take her out in public. But, you know, in the bedroom, she was, yeah. Okay, and then she realized why you went every time you come over, you just want me to just give you that. Ah, ah, ah. And I'd be like, uh, and he'd be like, okay, let's go have dinner. I'm like, dinner? Okay, let's go around here to the IHOP right around the corner. Cause I can't take your ass out in public, girl. You know, but you know, I was I was going through some things. Okay, I was going through some things. She was old, you know, a killer too. So I couldn't like take that bitch out nowhere. You know, we out somewhere. We 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 at. You know, a family gathering and all of a sudden bullets start flying because they're trying to kill her. Paula Peel popping Abdul said, you know, the Jackson brothers saw her at a Lakers game because she was the choreographer for the L.A. Lakers. OK, the Jackson brothers might have been like, oh, yeah, let's get us some Paula Al Peel popping Badu. Abdul. Here we got okay. Janet Jackson and Paula Peel popping Abdul together dancing. All right, I used to love her choreography, but then it became dated. Do y'all remember the song that Janet Jackson had with Herb Albert's wife? Making love in the rain. I can't believe the joy it brings me. We move forward to Janet and Renee, okay? Janet and Renee, they can go to the Golden Corral together. Okay, or the Chop House or wherever it is they want to, you know, go together. Now, Janet and Renee, they could go to the Golden Corral together. You know, they didn't have to sneak to the 7-Eleven and get a couple of hot dogs and then run to the car. Okay, like her and Bobby the Brown had to, right? Because remember, according to the Bobby the Brown, all they used to do was go to the hotel room and order up. Sir, like, I ain't good enough for you. Bobby, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. You good enough for me, Bobby. You No, you're not, because I don't want to deal with all them damn problems. But... 
Bobby, oh, Bobby, I'm just sorry. It's just certain people you just, you just, it's just, they just are what they are. They just a, a bid, you know. Oh, and the young person told me what a bid was. A bid mean you wasting time. What you doing, Nay? Oh, I'm bidding. Uh, why you keep calling me? You the bid. Nay, child, he provided his commentary, and that nigga looked a younger now than he did then. He still look like he like 16 years old. I'm like, hold on, Renee Alejandro. Hold on. How much plastic surgery did you get done? The thing about Renee's and Janet's dynamic was that they worked creatively together very well. Okay, now let's not fake Janet Jackson is a Taurus. And Taurians are not going to be bothered with you if they can't learn, earn, and grow from you. Okay, remember that. We move right. forward to talk about how Janet Jackson speaks about how she's living in Michael Jackson's shadow. So then we're moving forward to Rhythm Nation. All right, and child, they showed a video of Janet Jackson kirking on Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. It was the funniest sh I ever saw. What you, because mean, what do you want me to do? You told me to see it. Jimmy's trying, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis is trying to be calm. Come on, Janet. Just see it. Sing it with emotion. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of doing this. Y'all done did it 13 times. We done done four songs. What do you want from me? Janet, we need for you to put more power behind the song. What do you mean, more power? What are you doing? I'm done with this. I'm just I was falling out because the voice was so light and soft and you could tell she was angry as shit but the 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 voice it just wasn't matching up with the words girl it was so funny to Jet, me man Jenny was giving them the ninja child but it wasn't working okay it was not working I know that they was holding back their laughter because it was like she was like what do you want from me we did it four times I mean, I was like, this damn girl about to pop a grape. Then, let me just get this an honorable mention, child. Let me get this an honorable mention. What the hell is going on with Q-Tip? Y'all, somebody tell me what the hell is going on with Q-Tip. Why he look like that? Why he look like that? Ain't none of his friends tell him, girl, don't go on the camera for the Janet Jackson looking like that. Don't do that. I don't know what the hell is going on with Somebody go get Q-Tip. Somebody go save that man from whatever it is that he's going through. Because that I don't know what the hell is wrong with him. already done so please remember to like share the facebook subscribe and visit uptopbeauty.com now remember this the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down my naysayers my patron loves you babies have a good one it's just the little thing and it means so much to me.